Hello, and welcome to another bowling game session. This time I figured I would change up the language even more and go with a functional language, F sharp. Now I haven't written any functional language code since probably college, and I can pretty much guarantee that this isn't going to be 100% uh, idiomatic F sharp, but it is going to use the tests to drive the development and essentially get the job done. Now I've also added references to NUnit and the NUnit test adapter so that I can use the tests over here in the Visual Studio Test Explorer. I'm creating a bowling game module with the NUnit framework available and that's all the code I have here so let's let's get started. So I know that we're going to need a test fixture and we'll call that bowling game tests and in that test fixture we will need some tests we'll start with our usual uh, well I don't know if we can do can create game here because we're not creating objects so we're gonna say can roll gutter game is our first test We'll let this set of roles equal an array. Of zeros. And then we will assert that zero equals calculate score is what we'll probably call the function roles. So now, of course, if we try to run this, it's going to tell us the calculate score doesn't exist. So let's define it. Let's see, we will let calculate score equal, well, not equal yet, but we're going to give it something called roles, which is an int list. And it will equal, well, for now, it can just equal zero. and the test passes. Don't see any refactoring we can do here, so let's move on to the next test. This time we have an array of ones. And we assert that 20 equals calculate score rolls. And now this should, of course, fail because we expect 20 and get a zero. So let's see, how would we do this in F sharp? Well, we don't really want to sum this. We want to recursively move over this. So let's define another function. So this function will be sort of our entry point. Now we're going to create a recursive function. We'll just call it calculate score rec for now. It takes a list of roles. It also takes a score. And that will equal Let's see, we need a terminating condition for our recursion. So let's let's match roles with an empty array, then it just returns score. Else it returns, let's see, it would be uh, calculate score recursively roles.tail score plus the first item in roles. So now here we would just call that, call that recursive one with roles and an initial score of zero. Let's see what that does. 
and that worked. Excellent. Any refactoring to do here? Not really. Let's just move on to the next test. Can roll a spare. Uh, let's see, we need to combine a couple of arrays here. So we want five, five, and what do we usually do? Three. And we want to combine that with 17 length array of zero. And that score should be, I believe it's 16. Yeah, five for the first frame plus three bonus and then three for the second frame. All right, so we expect this to fail because we should only get a 13. Yep. So let's see how we would implement this. Uh, well, we want to create another match here. And this match would be, let's see, uh, rolls, when rolls, uh, item zero plus rolls item one equals 10. Then we do something very different. We want to calculate the score recursively with the tail of the tail plus, let's see, the score from the frame plus the bonus roll. to include score in that. All right, now let's see what that does. Oh, didn't like that at all. Um, argument was outside the list. Okay, so we've got an index outside of range error. Um, oh, you know what? Let's get rid of this for now and get rid of this for now. Let's get ourselves back to a working state. What we forgot was to make this calculate by frame rather than by roll. So that's why our array was getting all messed up. We would, for any normal frame, we would only decrement the array by one. And so the calculation for the, basically this right here, this calculation would fail at the end. So we want this to happen by frame. So let's see, it would be tail dot tail plus item zero plus item one. All right, that passes. So now let's pull these back out. And that passes. We can now roll a spare. All right, let's start some of our usual refactoring while we're at this. So we've got all these pluses and these direct array indexes. Let's create some private helpers. Let's call this calculate frame score. And just give it an int list of roles. And this is really just going to return these. Spelled it wrong. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that refactoring works. So let's do the same thing with the frame score. I mean, sorry, the spare frame score. should work as well. I wonder, can we 
return a boolean? I'm not sure. Let's test that. Okay, that works. All right, so this is reading a little more cleanly now. I don't like this tail dot tail. I don't know if there's a, a more idiomatic way to do that sort of thing in F sharp, but I think we can keep moving forward to put in our next test. And this is, of course, can roll a strike. First array, what do we normally do? 10, 4, and 3. And the rest is only 16 rolls. And this should be a score of 24. Of course, this is going to fail. With our usual out of bounds check because we now we're now introducing a frame that's only one roll where everything here assumes two rolls so let's continue with the pattern we have here to implement this remember that Calculating the spare score and calculating the strike score are actually the same, just coincidentally. But we'll keep them as separate methods because they, even though they have the exact same calculations, they mean two conceptually different things. And now we need to put in another condition here. When is strike? In this case, our recursion only be on tail, not on the tail of tail, plus calculate strike score for rolls. And that works. Now one thing I'm noticing here, just in terms of uh, how functional languages work, Notice we don't have an object that's keeping the state of roles. What we have is just a function that's expecting a complete state. It's expecting the complete array of roles. So it's just a little different on the uh, statelessness of functional programming versus the statefulness of object-oriented programming. Now let's move on to our last test. In an object-oriented world, this last one would pass right away, but I suspect this is not going to pass in this case. That's, of course, can roll perfect game. And that is 12 strikes, or 12 tens, rather. We assert that that score will equal 300. I think what we're going to get is possibly another out of bounds error. And the reason we get that, I suspect, is because of this check right here. As we're recursing down that list, we'll eventually get to that last frame, which has its two bonus rolls. We don't differentiate those as we recurse down that array. So we're going to get to that first bonus roll, the 11th roll, and try to calculate bonuses of two rolls beyond that, which don't exist. So I think we need to put in a condition here when calculating the strike score. Uh, let's see. We 
we only care if rolls dot length is greater than three. Well, actually, we can just paste this here. So, if rolls dot length is greater than three, then we're still on previous frames and we can calculate bonuses, but when we get to that last frame, we really only care about that one roll. Now let's test that, and that passes. All right, I don't think we have any major refactoring to do here. So that's it for the bowling game in F-sharp in a functional language. That's all. Thanks for watching.